Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we're going to be covering all of my force feedback and graphics settings for Automobile Easter 2. So let's start off with my force feedback settings. Now AMS2's force feedback has always been a little questionable and here are the main issues that I've had with it in the past. First, the force feedback was always a little dead whenever my wheel was relatively straight and it took a fair bit of turning the wheel to finally feel some kind of resistance in it from the tyre physics. This made it really hard to understand when I was driving on the limit and would cause me to constantly lose the rear of the car and make my lap times really inconsistent. There was also a constant grainy feeling while driving and I could almost feel like a grinding in my wheelbase whenever traction control was activating in the car. And it got so bad that sometimes I could actually smell my wheelbase overheating, which isn't really ideal. Lastly, force feedback would always feel really unbalanced because I wouldn't feel much resistance in the wheel when turning it, but then hitting curbs and other objects would feel really harsh. Then obviously I had the dilemma where I couldn't turn my force feedback up to feel the tyre physics better because then the curbs and other harsh objects would feel way too strong. It was a complete mess, but after searching through the forums, I actually found some recommended settings from the developers, which changed the game for me completely. Now these settings that I'm showing you are specific to my wheelbase, which is a Fanatec DD1, but the forum post which I'll leave in the description below has recommended settings for a wide variety of wheelbases. First in the Fanatec software, we have the following. Sensitivity set to auto, force feedback strength 50, force feedback scale peak, natural damper 10, natural friction 3, natural inertia 5. Interpolation filter 4, now this is what fixed that grainy grinding feeling for me. Between 3 and 4 is recommended by the developers, but I found that going higher than this tends to mute the force feedback feeling which isn't ideal either. So find a balance, I'd say 3 to 4 is fine. Effect intensity 90, force and spring effects 100, and game damper effect off. Now inside Automobile Easter 2, go to settings, controls, and then force feedback. Set type to default. Default plus I found introduced way too much extra information, which made the overall feeling way too noisy and I struggled to understand what my tires were doing because of this. Set gain between 30 and 40%, low force boost to 10, FX 25, and dampening 50. Menu spring doesn't affect anything in your force feedback while driving, as it only controls the effect of your wheel returning to center whenever you leave a racing session and head back to the main menu, so keep it low. Now since I changed over to these settings, the game actually feels pretty decent. Don't get me wrong, it's still not perfect, but now I can actually feel when my tyres are on their limit and I have a good idea at all times of what the car is doing, which made my lap times really consistent. And it's actually made me excited to start playing AMS2 again. Just remember at the end of the day, good force feedback will always come down to your own personal taste. You might try these settings and find that they don't feel good at all, and that's absolutely fine, because what feels good for me might not feel good for you. There's a few different wheelbases covered in the forum post that I mentioned, so if you can't be bothered scrolling through that wall of text, I'll leave some screenshots of the different force feedback settings in the description so that you can access them a little easier when making your changes. Now let's move on to my graphic settings. So if you're new to our channel, when you see this picture I need you to understand something. Divide this image into two halves. See everything below this red line? That's not actually game footage. That's all real life components from our mixed reality sim rig, which allows us to blend the game and our rig together into an immersive experience. Now, if you're curious about how we built all of that, I'll leave a link to that rig tour for you below, but today we're focusing on how we achieve this top half of the image. So PC hardware wise, we're running an RTX 3080, Intel i9-10900K with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And we run AMS2 at triple 1440p resolution at between 90 to 100 FPS most of the time. So first go to settings, then performance. Set the resolution and frame rate to your preference. I run at full screen because running in windowed mode can often reduce FPS. Texture filtering is set to anisotropic 4x. V-Sync is off because I use NVIDIA G-Sync, which is a similar system to reduce screen tearing. MSAA high, host AA off. Reflections high, environment map high, car detail ultra, 
Max Visible Cards is a new setting in AMS2 which can save you a lot of performance because it allows you to limit how many cards your GPU will render at maximum and if you limit this like I did to 12 to 14 cards, it can give you a lot more FPS without affecting your experience in game. Track detail we set to high, pit crew detail you can set to low if you like, I have it set to all as it doesn't really affect my FPS much, shadow detail high, enhanced mirror yes, motion blur off, Render frames ahead 2. Detail grass is set to medium because you can't really notice high detail grass while you're driving at high speeds. Particle level is set to high. And lastly, particle density high. Next, head to the visuals menu. Set post processing filters to on. Now, both sun flare settings are turned off, and I'll explain why. You see, although these sun flares might look cool at first, they aren't actually a realistic thing that we see with our eyes. These flares are sometimes visible through camera lenses, but that doesn't make sense here because in this case, the simulator is supposed to make us feel like we're sitting in the car and looking at the environment through our own eyes. And if you compare the two images here, you'll see that the footage with sun flares turned off looks more smooth and realistic. Bloom and heat haze are set to on, but if you find these settings are too bright and distracting, just turn them off because they do make it harder to see what's coming ahead when you're driving in sunny conditions. Exposure compensation I don't touch. Raindrops is set to yes and vignette off. Now the crepuscular ray setting is really important because that's what gives us that appealing effect of the sun's rays traveling through the environment, such as the trees that you can see here. In fact, I'd say that this setting alone is probably what makes AMS2 stand out graphically from other simulators, and if you use an ambient lighting system like me, they're really good at picking out these rays as they appear on screen, giving us a really immersive experience. Screen dirt I have set to off as I find it distracting, and cockpit mirrors are turned on. Now the final step to achieving our image is actually thanks to the monitors that we use. But there's also a way to do this artificially for free if you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your PC. You see, the monitors that we use have a built-in HDR feature. Now, it's not amazing or anything, but it's good enough that it makes our image pop just that little bit extra so that everything appears a little more vibrant. Now, if you don't own a monitor that features built-in HDR, you're obviously not going to go out and buy new monitors just to get a slightly better image in AMS2. But there is a way that you can try and copy this effect if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. First head into AMS2 and open up a replay. Now pause the replay in a scene where you've got the sun shining at you and maybe even a car in front of you. Now press Alt Z to open up the Nvidia overlay and then select Game Filter. You'll have this menu with a bunch of sliders pop up. Now with this process, please understand that your settings are probably going to be different from everyone else's because the color representation in your monitors won't be the same as another person. Not to mention that this comes down to personal preference as well. It's really easy to get sucked into these filter menus and spend hours and hours trying to make changes. But honestly, you shouldn't make it too complicated. Just think for a second, what does HDR do? Basically, it increases the range of color in an image so that your colors are more vibrant and highlights and shadows are more crisp. So I would just keep it simple and play with these three sliders, vibrance, highlights, and shadows. And just remember to make really small changes at a time. Make a change, take a look at the image, and then repeat until you feel happy with the image in front of you. And don't get carried away with this, because when it comes to color composition, one thing that I've learned is that most of the time, less is more. So keep your changes minimal. Well, that covers everything, and hopefully this video helped you out today. If you have any further questions about my force feedback and graphic settings, just leave a comment below. If you're on the fence about AMS2, I really encourage you to give it a go because in my opinion, the game's currently in a really good state. When it comes to a single player sim racing experience with great visuals, this is definitely my favourite. The AI gives really good close racing and the huge amount of cars included in the base game make this a really good value for money simulator. But that's all we have time for today, so as always guys, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.